Welcome again to the part 2 of data model versus semantic model. So in the previous video we discussed about the journey of traditional data model where you start with the conceptual data model then you go through logical model and eventually you finish at physical model. And in this video actually we will learn what is a semantic model and how it is different from the traditional data model and how this is similar to the traditional logical model. So let's get started. So I'm talking about the part just before Power BI semantic model and that can be the data warehouse that we have been discussing in the first part of this video series. And this pick also proves whether it is Tableau, Power BI, Sigma, so forth and so on. There is an extra layer between the data and the visualization and that layer is called as semantic model. And as we discussed in our previous session or the first of this video series, a data warehouse will go through three different stages. First is the conceptual design or conceptual model. Second one is the logical model. Third, third one is the physical model. So the semantic model is pretty much like the logical model. So in a way you are coming back to the logical model now. As per the definition there, a logical data model defines attributes and relationships. And that's what you do with Power BI or say Tableau. This is that stage. For example, with Power BI, we are trying to relate different entities over there. And this can include a custom table like calendar table, which is not present in the data warehouse, plus include a table from a Google sheet, from a Excel sheet, so forth and so on. So you are making your own customized model as per your requirement, as per your domain. Maybe you don't need all the tables present in the data warehouse, right? So you pick only the tables that you need. You have the option to include a table from a different database. You can even create a calendar table. Data model is pretty much specific to your BI needs. So what you see in front of you is a logic. It shows that HR fact table is re related to the US state table and the type of the cardinality over here is one to many from the US states. Similarly, HR fact table again is related to the calendar table because within a day there can be multiple hires though that's why one to many relationship over there. Don't see any codes over there. You don't see left outer join. You don't see the table names over there. You see the logic in the form of a diagram. It will be pretty easy for your colleague to understand the relationships between different entities over there. And this is pretty similar to the logical diagram that we had already seen. And I will show that to you again. Now you can see it yourself. This looks pretty similar to what you are making with Power BI, the semantic model. And that's why sometimes a logical data model is referred to as a semantic model. And all components of the data model are translated into business friendly terms that can facilitate the overall understanding of the data model. And the second major advantage that this logical layer can contain the transformation, calculation, whatever you are doing with Power Query Editor, and it, it will store it. It will also act as a one-stop shop data source, right? So that you don't have to go back to the data source and make those transformations again and again. So maybe I can make use of Power BI to show you that. That will th make things more clear. Now we can showcase the real advantages. For example, the first advantage is in front of you itself, right? Now you can see the relationships pretty clearly over there. But on the top of that, I would like to change this DOB to date of birth. So I can come over here, date of birth. And remember this is being saved at my semantic model. Don't forget that part. What about saving transformation? Now I can go to transform data and I have already done certain transformations over there. So this is also being saved at my semantic model. On the top of that, I can write certain calculations over there, DAX, and that will be saved at my semantic model. Maybe I want to know year over year sales. I write a DAX for that. That is being saved at my semantic model. In addition to that, you have certain other options, like you can describe your column, right? So you can describe about your formula, uh, any complex uh, text function, right? That will be pretty useful because this will be accessible to the concerned folks, right? So, and they can, for example, your colleague, and they'll get to know the formula or the description of the formula. Synonyms, very, very useful for the AI-backed, artificial intelligence-backed feature called Q&A, because sometimes customer tend to, uh, you know, use certain alternative words for this, for example, data word, maybe someone would say DOB again, right? So you can write all those synonyms so that when you ask pose the question with natural language, uh, you are, AI will be able to detect that. So very important. You can uh, change the data type as well from there. Now everything is being stored at your semantic model. Yeah, remember that. So once you have 
your Power BI semantic model ready, you will publish the same to the Power BI service and it will be posted along with the PBIX file. And that's where you create the semantic model at Power BI service level. It will allow you, your colleagues and all the relevant developers to create report against this semantic model. So whatever transformation that you make, whatever calculations that or the decks in this case that you make will be helpful for the whole team, not only for you. It's not specific to you. And that's the ultimate advantage of having Power BI semantic model. With that, this is the end of this session. I hope this was informative. If yes, go ahead and hit the like button, share this video with others and do, and do not forget to subscribe the channel. So this is Ritesh signing off from Dancing with Data. Because data is the data that you all know.